Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today, thanks to these two slates I'm holding my hand, we can finally continue on into Astral Sorcery and actually go build the Celestial Altar to unblock us and hopefully finish out this chapter. Because this is all that we have remaining. That said, there is a problem. If we go into the pattern for the Celestial Altar, well, most of this looks doable, except there's one item down here, the Arcane Pedestal, which if we click this, you'll notice that there is a missing Thaumcraft recipe up here because we haven't actually unlocked this yet because I've been lazy about Thaumcraft. So we need to delve back into Thaumcraft, specifically the Arcane Infusion chapter, which we barely started because thankfully the Arcane Pedestal is right here and one of the very first things we have to do inside this chapter. And to do that, we need a piece of research and some really basic items. So let me go grind out some research and hopefully not go insane. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. It took me way longer than I want to admit to remember how all of my Thomcraft stuff worked because it required I actually go add to my array here so I can get some error files. Oops. Anyhow, we're now done with this step and it required way more research than I wanna talk about too, but we're done. So we can click that and now we have this step unlocked, which requires making the Runix matrix, which thankfully is just pretty easy. It's just some arc green stone bricks and a niter. And that step was at least simple, which thankfully unlocked the arcane pedestal. And now we can go back to ignoring Thaumcraft and pretend this doesn't exist some more. Well, except for the fact that I have to go make a whole bunch more Thaumium, but that's at least easy. All right, we've got all the pieces made for the Celestial Altar, including all of the Thaumium, which caused me to destroy my old shovel on accident by tossing to the Crucible. Oops. Anyhow, let's fire this up. And now we have the new table, which opened up a new group in the book, but we're not gonna look at that yet. Because back in the Celestial Altar chapter, you'll notice that the platform is very slightly different than the one we have. So we need to fix that first. All right, and now we have the new snazzy Celestial Altar. Do not forget to smash this after it creates itself to pick it up so that you actually get credit for the quest. Oh, while it's nighttime and while I was going to go get some of the constellations that I didn't have yet, there's one special constellation I should actually mention that you should be on the lookout because it's relatively rare, and that's Horologium. The, the trick is it shows up once a month in game, but it always shows up after an eclipse. So if you see the sun go dark during the day, come up here and look for it. And it looks like the hourglass like this. So just don't forget to come get that because it, it is the rarest of all the constellations. So here we are finally in the constellation chapter with all the remaining stuff we have to build. Now I'm gonna clear, I would love to jump straight to the iridescent altar and get it done, except the iridescent altar requires all sorts of stuff from blood magic. So I think we're gonna have to go to do one more session with blood magic yet before we can finish this chapter out completely. Oops. That said, we can always just move straight into the Starlight Infuser right here to open up the rest of this though. And the Starlight Infuser is pretty straightforward for pieces because it's mostly just marble. The caveat, however, is it requires a pretty sizable structure to put it on. And I'm going to need to create some more space to do this in. Thankfully, we have all the liquid Starlight we need though. All right, I gathered up all of the marble. So let's fire this up. And there we go. All right, so I decided to replace the ritual pedestal that was back over in this corner with the platform for the starlight infuser, because this is more useful and I didn't actually have a use for the pedestal yet. So let me slap this down. As to what we can use this for, well, it's, it's used for upgrading a whole bunch of things. One of the biggest things right now for me is they can turn the glass panes directly into glass lenses. And you just do it by right clicking it into the altar. You know what doesn't work if you have one single block wrong in your structure? Anything in Astral Sorcery just about. I forgot the lapis block under the actual Starlin Infuser itself. So the way this works is you right click the item you want onto it and then you right click the resonating wand. And then you look around and realize your last one ate up one of your buckets of starlight and you need to replace it. Because using this altar occasionally uses up some or all of the starlight pool around it, so it does need to be refilled. Probably should automate this, but I mean, 
I, I don't want to right now at least. All right, fixed. And then you right click the altar with your wand to start it up just like the other crafting tables here. And it lights up and does its thing. But now I at least can make the glass without using a ton of components like I had to doing it the Thaumcraft way. Now, more importantly, this is actually mostly for making resonating gems, which we'll get to in a bit. But there are a few other convenient recipes you know, which would be nice if I wasn't pretty far advanced and didn't have easy access to all of the stuff already. But it is also for upgrading the crystal weaponry, which I'm not going to use or do. So, you know, mostly just resonating gems and or those classes for now, which is also why I'm not going to bother automating this. That said, we did just mention the resonating gem, which is the next step. And surprise, surprise, the recipe is just an aquamarine in there. So I guess let's just get it done. All right, and one step closer to the end. And now we are finally up to the collector crystals, which is the crystal we found in the temple to kick off astral sorcery to begin with. And making these at this point is not too bad because it's all stuff we have. We just need a couple more resonating gems and some more rock crystals. But you know, we have easy access to rock crystals thanks to the laser base that I made because that's one of the things that's popping out of it. Okay, I missed that the rock crystal had to be an attuned one, but I already had one, so I didn't have to go chuck that into the center over there. But I think we're just about good to go, although I'm waiting for this to finish powering up because it has to be right about there. It looks like we're gonna get to here-ish. Nope, I was wrong. Uh, it's not getting enough power. I apparently have to figure out how to use the spectral relays after all. All right, so I have two of the spectral relays set up. They're set up on little multi-block structures that are like this. Make sure that you use the arch blocks, not the normal marble and the center pieces like that. You see the wavy thing on the side. And throw a glass lens on top of it and then it starts getting sparklies like that. It has to be within 16 blocks of your crafting table, but you don't want them too close together because they'll cannibalize starlight from each other. So if you have them on a radial grid like this on spokes coming out from the sides of your altar, you're probably fine. If we look at the table now, you can see that it's making a collector crystal and it's completely full of starlight. So let's kick this off finally. And there we go. And with that, we have the second to last quest for Astral Sorcery finished now. And unfortunately, we cannot do the Iridescent Altar now. The whole purpose of the Collector Crystals is they will constantly feed power from their constellation that they're tuned to to the crafting table so that it's available at all hours during the day and not just at night. I'm not gonna bother hooking it up right now. I've got it hooked up to Discardia because that's the only attuned crystal I had. There are probably certainly better choices and I probably should look at how to do it. But there's also a ton of other stuff we could still do in Astral Sorcery. Because as a reminder, we unlock the constellation section which has an awful lot of nodes that we aren't currently required to actually use to progress in anything in Enigmatica. I would be willing to bet that some of this is going to come into play in the later steps of either Thaumcraft or Blood Magic or in the extended crafting for the, the bragging rights section, but I don't actually know. I'm not peeking ahead. I, I don't want to scare myself, honestly. Um, I'll, I'll go look at what's in the book at some point in the future, but for now, I, I think it's time to call it a night, actually. The moon is bright, the constellations are pretty, and I, I'm close enough to done that I'm just over it. So, as always... I'm Ard, thank you for watching, and have a good day.